Hi, my friends. If you open the assembly environment by using the IAM template, you gain access to the uh, design, this tab, which is a shortcut for design accelerator. Design accelerator is a set of modules integrated into the inventor that serve to design structures specific to mechanical engineering. Frames, shafts, cams, springs and mechanical transmissions such as gears, chain or belt drives, bearing, etc. The chapters or uh, directions of this uh, design accelerator are fasten, frame generator, power transmission, spring, measure, and tolerance analysis. In this tutorial, we start by uh, discussing about the frame generator. This is uh, a module which uh, deals with uh, frames. Frames are uh, metallic structures made of profiles, pipes, the U profiles, I, L profiles, etc. Found in the construction of stands, metal panels, lattice beams and metal constructions of all kinds. Let's start to create and study a street lantern like this one. We start by creating a sketch. In this plane but uh, we want to have this up not down align with a length of 5,000 millimeters as you can see here and then to add some other lines like this one, restart, another line like this, but uh, with a point on the sloped line. Another one is this. Dimensions 70 degrees here, 400, same level up of these two lines. We want this to be also here and 500 the position of first and 450 the other. The length of this is 800 and uh, the distance here or this dimension is 7 Okay, that's all. You see what is the presentation. This is not important at all. Let's uh, make not visible dimensions and save as a street lantern an, I, an IPT yes good then we create an assembly to have access to the frame generator of course where we place not from content center but from our directory this sketch 
with the must be placed grounded in origin you see what is the aspect now it is vertical of course the system of axes are totally different for IPT and IAM this is uh, the new uh, scheme of Autodesk now we have an assembly yes? no matter that this assembly contains only one part and no matter that uh, this part is only a sketch this is all we need to start with the frame generator design you see the presented uh, ribbon and here only this is accessible and frame analysis at the frame panel we activate the insert frame because we want to attach oh I have to uh, save this I'll save it as a street lantern but not IPT but I am which is by default now we have not an assembly but street lantern assembly we have to find what category we select what category of profiles and we select this round tube the uh, family is this the size is 100 0 1.6 with a, a wall of 6 yes this is a dimension for a tube a diameter external diameter and the thickness of the wall okay now what now you see here a blue underlined option which is expecting us to select something to select a line or an edge from somewhere in this assembly we select this line and you can see that now is attached to this line a ghost of the future tube okay and now we have to accept this um, file names and their placement then the names you confirm that this name is uh, good for you yes it is okay and now the ghost becomes the real tube we want to continue with uh, attaching uh, we continue by attaching new profiles to this uh, remaining lines but at a dimension 76 point one with a wall of four millimeters yes to which lines to this line and to this line okay names and so on and now we have these profiles attached you have to uh, see that uh, everyone is limited to the line from inside this means that this one is uh, intersected with this or what and the other end the same yes they are uh, intersected uh, one to each other in collision I can say we can look from up to see inside of one the other 
Oh, but we don't want to see this. In the meantime, let's study the browser. You see, this is our uh, IPT placed here, a sketch. And uh, these are added by the frame generator. What is added? Three profiles. This is a sub-assembly which must be considered as a unit. If I want to uh, make changes, I have to uh, select every object of this sub-assembly. I want to notch this uh, element to be adapted to this other element. I apply the tool notch. I select which one is to be cut it and then which one cuts. And you see here the result, a ghost of the result. Okay. Then I want to make the same here. Notch which is the uh, element to be cut it this it is the first which one cuts this okay now if we uh, make this to not visible we can see that uh, uh, the part was very nice uh, configured to be uh, welded to the other. Look from the side. Yes? Let's go back to make them visible. And now we want to study this construction to find out what is the stress behavior. To do this we use either this tool or this tool. Not stress analysis which you know from my former uh, tutorials. If not uh, go to the start of playlist. I want to use this uh, tool because it is together with the other. And I apply create simulation. I accept the name. OK. The uh, gravity force is applied not correctly. I double click on the gravity and I select the axis Z. And now I see that the direction is OK. And the value, of course. To create simulation, you know that uh, I have to apply not only a force, but material and uh, constraints. Material is added automatically because I selected some profiles. And I add a fixed or recessed uh, constraint at the end of the uh, beam. Good. Let's simulate. Everything is respected. Material is already applied. Uh, constraints we did and force is the natural gravity force. Simulate. You see the displacement here. This is the displacement in millimeters. Maximum displacement. Let's see what is the stress. Normal stress S max. 
2.2 megapascal animation is this and uh, we can add max value min value let's do it max value minimum value to see uh, what is the behavior animate okay remember 2.2 .2 megapascal okay let's modify the model we modify it by adding another uh, profile to this line design insert frame same data to this ok ok then notch which is cut it this which cuts both this and this yes we can apply two at a time okay we go back to frame analysis uh, simulate and we see that half of the previous is now uh, the maximum uh, stress okay you can uh, obtain a report of this uh, all uh, analyze by using this tool but this is what we discussed in uh, my previous tutorials Good. Let's study now another example. A characteristic construction of uh, frames, uh, lattice beams. We create a part by starting with a sketch an horizontal line of 6000 millimeters this one and a vertical line here of uh, 500 and then one two, three, four, and so on, to reach the other end. Five heights are here. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, they must have the ends on the same horizontal, all of them. And they must be equal to a limit. This is the limit. But why? Because this was not on the line. Coincident. Now you see fully constrained. 
finish sketch F6 hide the dimensions and we place a point to this end yes this is the center point if I uh, click here you see that point yes and uh, we'll use these two points in uh, the next uh, stage save this as uh, lattice beams as a part of course and then we close it and we create an assembly and then place the part grounded at origin and this assembly and we add other two instances of the same part one two three now we create constraint between this point and the center point of the second instance this apply again this point coincident with the center point of the next instance okay what means this is this means that we can move all these uh, entities or parts in space at our will they uh, have the behavior just as parts even if they are sketches yes and now I apply parallelism of this kind between the longer elements apply and then the other one okay what now now we can only move them like panels yes and I want to close the constraints by connecting this point with the center point of the first so constrain this point with the center point of the first instance the grounded one this okay f6 what we have now we have a lattice beams made by lines only we don't want to see the end points so we apply a view object visibility user work points I don't want to see user work points and now this is a clean presentation of what we did till now we go to insert frame yes this is our uh, target to create a real lattice beam but first we save the assembly as a lattice beams with the default extents uh, I am look here lattice beams I am good 
we insert frame but selecting other family this family which has uh, thinner uh, sizes first we want to apply a profile with a dimension of uh, 48.3 48.3 with the wall of 3.2 to the nine beams one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yes lateral um, elements plus but we save under a file name and other names so we have uh, that profiles applied the other we want to be thinner how thinner 21.3 with the wall of 2.3 which one we can select them collectively look here I click in an empty space from the right to the left and I selected some of them and now I select other unselected ones which are this okay we accept everything subtilities are not for us for the moment And now we can see something very strange. You see here at the corner are uh, a connection of many elements. One, two, three, four. To apply the study, we don't want to uh, create notches and uh, so on uh, so-called uh, end treatments when we apply notch or other tools from this area uh, you create end treatments we don't want to create end treatments for so many elements uh, only to have a possibility to study it with frame analysis this is possible because in uh, settings of the frame analysis of uh, frames we have here a suggestion for the beam model by creating rigid links with a tolerance of 2% you can increase this value if you know what you do here but uh, for uh, this uh, construction this is okay um, the analyzer will consider welded these points in a limit of two percent distance from the point to the other directions yes so we consider this as welded notched welded all uh, you think is necessary create simulation accept uh, the name okay now we have to apply 
forces, constraints and material. Material is already assigned. Forces. I want this force, gravity, to be oriented on Z axis. So I double click it. I select Z. I see that the direction is good. OK. We add pinned, not fixed, uh, constraint to the uh, corners. Pin again here. Pin again here, and I turn the model to apply also at this corner a pinned constraint. Good. Material is OK, so I apply run simulation. You see the result. What is this? This is the displacement. At 6 meters to have 0 0.2 millimeters is very small. Um, modification, uh, deformation of the lattice beams. What about the stress? The stress as maximum is uh, 3.4 megapascal. This is also small. Animation shows us what happens, by the way. You see what happens. There are um, compression on the upper and stretching on the other side. We can uh, see better if we add maximum value and minimum value. You see this is minus, minus 3 plus 3. They are um, comparable. I can move them. Maximum is here. You are free to think why. Good. Let's apply a serious load to this uh, lattice beam. We select force and we apply it at the midpoint of this. I have to write here a value. 3000 of course. And uh, what is uh, the value? I double click on my new force and I apply 1000 deca newtons. Yes. At the offset of 3000. Uh, the measuring starts from the right. Okay. Let's simulate again. Now you see five millimeters instead of zero point two. Yes, and the stress maximum and minimum are uh, major, not uh, ignorable. You see how happens okay but uh, in such a situation the force is uh, uh, distributed on the length let's apply a 
distributed or continuous load. I uh, eliminated uh, the concentrated force and now I add a force on this all length not 10 but 1000 deca newton per 6000 millimeters that's the real distributed value per millimeter okay simulate again and we see a reasonable distribution of uh, forces with 2.3 millimeters deformation or displacement and maximum 29 megapascal which is acceptable the animations show the behavior and you see this animation yes okay that's all for today thanks for watching bye bye